What's up guys, Questler here, and today we're going to be discussing the game development process. The game development process is the entire process of developing a video game from start to finish. So basically, we're going to go over each and every step in this video and explain each step and the steps that you need to take to develop your dream game, right? This kind of goes in line with my how to learn game programming and how to learn game development fast. This is kind of just a, a series of videos, just like those ones and this one's kind of just explaining a key topic in game development. And that's what we're really going to be doing. Games are really no different than any other software, and you could use software engineering design principles to uh, design your game and develop it, right? But yeah, really it's no different than any other software like I've mentioned in my other videos, and games work the same way. One, developing the software, so you really gotta think about the development life cycle of the whole thing, which is where this video comes in. With all that being said, let's get right into this. All right, so the first step in the game development process is conceptualization. Think of ideas for your game. So you're gonna to wanna to brainstorm some ideas for your game to get a starting point on the developing process. So this is the very first step in the whole thing is to brainstorm what kind of game you want to make. You might wanna keep a list of ideas. So like write them down somewhere in like a notepad, a notebook, keep a list of like bullet points on your computer, like in a text document or something like that of ideas that are coming to mind for the kind of game that you wanna make. This is also probably you're gonna to wanna to pick the kind of like if it's a 3D game or a 2D game, narrow down what kind of genre it is, maybe some gameplay mechanics that you're gonna be wanting to develop and stuff like that just to kind of get some ideas down this is really what this whole step is about is generating ideas and thinking about what kind of game you are wanting to make. Play some other games that are similar to the ideas that you are coming up with. So like if you were like thinking about making a first person shooter, go play Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, Halo, other first person shooter games. So you can get an idea of the kind of first person shooter game you're gonna be making. That's just an example though. There are lots of other genres of games out there and this is also where you wanna narrow down the genre of what game you're gonna be making, like a sandbox game, an RPG, FPS, um, casual, you know, whatever can be a puzzle game, right? And you're going to want to just figure out what genre that is and then go play that genre of game so you can get inspiration for your own game as well. This is just all about ideas. Write them down as you're playing those games. Write down some key things that the mechanics in those games that you enjoy. Write down things that you don't enjoy so that way you have ideas of what to do and what not to do when you develop your game. And that way you can kind of figure that out. So when you're developing the game, you'll have ideas of what you want to do. This is also where you're probably gonna wanna narrow down what your core game loop is, or at least generate some ideas of what your core game loop is gonna be. If you don't know what a core game loop is, a core game loop is basically the series of actions that the player repeats over and over again, and that is the primary flow of your game. An example of this is Minecraft's core game loop, where the core game loop of that game is to find resources, mine them, craft items, build, and survive, right? And those, th those things kinda cycle over and over and over again because you're doing those things over and over and over that's kind of what the core game loop is the series of actions your player is going to be doing over again constantly that's pretty much where you're going to want to define what your core game loop is get some ideas down write it down maybe not narrow it down completely uh you can kind of because in the next phase you're going to refine these ideas and really start digging into what kind of game you're going to be making just come up with ideas write them down and that's pretty much all this phase is. The next phase in the development cycle of your game is the pre-production phase. This is where you're gonna be creating a game design document, prototyping your game, coming up with other ideas, fleshing out game mechanics and stuff like that, figuring out the style, the art style of your game, right? What's the artwork gonna look like? Start drawing up some concept art. If you're making a game that is heavy in art, right? Start figuring out if you're not really good at art and you're better at programming, start narrowing down kind of core game mechanics of your game because you're really going to want to start focusing on what your strong suit is and how you're going to develop this game around what you're good at, right? If you're good at art, start focusing on how you're going to develop the art and stuff like that. Start developing concept art. Also, create a game design document. This is where you're going to really narrow down the game mechanics, what the player is going to be doing, how many players are going to be playing the game, core mechanics of the game, enemy types. Uh, levels, how many levels are going to be in the game, uh, the story, well, how the story is going to roll, stuff like that. And you're going to really just narrow down all those ideas that you had in the conceptualization phase, and you're going to be refining them and kind of nailing them down to what kind of game you're going to be making, right? And this is where a game design document is really important. I have a link in the description to uh, a game design document template made by Unity, and uh, you can just use that. Um, there are other game design document templates online that you can check out. Just find one and just kind of write it down. You can make your own as well. Um, to kind of loosely what your game is going to be. I 
if you want to skip making a game design document, you can do that too. But I suggest at least having some ideas down in it and making sure you're kind of narrowing a couple things down from your conceptualization phase and kind of figuring out, you know, that kind of stuff in the game design document. This is also where you're going to flesh out the core game loop idea and game mechanics, uh, figure out art style for your game and what kind of art is going to be in the game, whether it's 2D or 3D, you're really going to want to nail that down now and all those other little details like that. And there's just the pre-production phase before you actually hop in the development. You could also make some small demos of your game in the pre-production phase. So prototype it a little bit, kind of hop in engine and do a little, you know, couple things here and there to kind of see if a game mechanic is fun or not and kind of just try to make it. But without actually making a full game, maybe using like Unity's capsule and basic assets and stuff like that in Unity or Unreal Engine, whatever engine you're going to be using. Um, but yeah, just basically come up with ideas and refine them and take all those ideas you had from the conceptualization phase and apply them here and narrow things down and nail it down a little harder into what kind of game you're going to be making. The next step in the development process is production. Development of your game. This is where you're going to really want to figure out what tools you're going to be making your game with. So you're going to want to pick a game engine, whether it be Unreal Engine, Unity, Game Maker Studio, Cry Engine, whatever engine you're going to be using, uh, you're going to want to figure that out now. This is really where you're going to want to, this is what you're going to be using to develop your game. You're going to be using this through the whole development process from here on out. This is the game engine you're using. Um, you're also going to want to figure out, uh, you know, a DAW for sound design, whether it be Audacity, FL Studio. There's probably plenty of other DAWs out there that are available, um, probably free ones too that you can use for developing sounds. And you're going to want to figure out what your sound design is for music and stuff like that. That's probably another key software that you're going to be using. Uh, you're going to want a photo editing software like Affinity Photo or A Sprite um, or Photoshop, right? Those you're going to want a photo editing software. You're going to be using that for not only marketing down the road because you're going to want to you're gonna need marketing material for your game on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, HIO, Slimmer IO, wherever you're releasing your game, you're going to need artwork for it to make the capsule images and all that. Um, you're also going to need it for possibly if you're making a 2D game to make the artwork for your game. So you're going to want to figure out what software you're going to be using. This is probably the most important step in the entire development, uh, development process is production. You're going to also want to figure out an IDE for programming, whether it be Visual Studio, Writer, whatever your IDE you're most comfortable in, you're going to want to use that, right? Uh, obviously, you're going to have to figure out what's compatible with your game engine as well. A lot of game engines uh, like Unity and Unreal Engine use Visual Studio for programming. Uh, both of those are used there uh, if you're using visual scripting don't worry about it uh, you're not going to need an ide i guess because you're using visual scripting like blueprinting or uh or unity's uh visual scripting system as well i'm pretty sure game maker studio also has a visual scripting system as well so you really wouldn't have to worry about that there this is also you're gonna develop mechanics and you're gonna develop the game flesh out the story really start developing the story and stuff like that you're gonna be developing the game this is the stage where you're building your game right this is also where you're probably going to want to get an early start on marketing your game as well. I know for most games, um, you're going to want to market them early. And the earlier you market, the better to kind of get that community and traction building. So I would also suggest once you start developing your game, once you're able to get some decent screenshots of it halfway through the development process, start marketing the game. Build a Steam page, your HIO page, wherever you're going to be releasing it, start building that marketing presence start releasing pictures on social media like instagram twitter facebook youtube start making some small game trailers stuff like that it's a good idea to get an early start on marketing your game so that way when it comes to launch you have a viewer and customer base that's ready to buy your game right this is uh Im important um, you're also going to refine your game mechanics and your core game loop. Really make sure you're testing your game as you go. So when you develop a feature, make sure you test it and make sure it's solid, make sure it's working as you intend it to. You can use the agile development methodology. I'll have a picture on screen here. So you're basically going to want to come up with an idea, build it, test it, refine it. You're going to be constantly doing this thing, going back, fixing things. I also would suggest using software like Jira and Trello to keep track of tasks and the progress of developing your game. So keeping that there to keep your individual tasks and so you can kind of not forget where you are if you stop for a few weeks or you can kind of keep organized, a uh, nice organized list of the tasks you need to do, right? Whether it's like developing your levels or programming your player character or bug fixes and stuff like that. You can keep a place that has a nice list of all those things that you can use and Jira and Trello are free. So I would suggest using those. Also, it's worth using GitHub or any other source control like GitLab, GitHub, or whatever. I would suggest using this not only as a way to back up your project in case something happens to it, but also as a way of using it as source control. So as you're developing your game, you can have several branches 
of your project. You can have a main branch, a development branch, and with those Jira tickets that I mentioned earlier, you can make Jira tickets for each individual task and make branches for those tasks until they're complete and only merge them in once you have uh, completed that task and then developing eventually like taking that development branch and merging it back into main once it's been fully tested so you can mass test features without actually affecting um, things that you know that are for sure working so you can test things kind of in a vacuum. So I would suggest using source control as well to develop your game. A lot of software developers use it. I'm pretty sure every software developer professionally uses it because if you're not, that'd be dumb. Uh, and I also suggest like I use it myself for my game and I know a lot of other indie game developers use it for their games as well. So I would suggest you do this as well. GitHub is free. Make a GitHub account. I'll have a link in the description to get GitHub and GitHub Desktop. And I have a whole video on a guide to using Unreal Engine in GitHub. I'll have a card for that in the top right corner as well. So be sure to go check that out as well if you need to learn how to use GitHub with Unreal Engine. But yeah, use, use all those tools. And that's pretty much it for the development phase of this. The next phase after the development phase is a very important phase as well. And that is the playtesting phase. This kind of goes hand in hand with development because you can kind of play test while developing your game. So you're gonna want to gather an audience to play test your game, whether it be friends, family, or other random people that are interested in your game, people that have wish listed your game on Steam. Gather those people together and have them play test your game. And you're gonna want to make changes based on the feedback that you're getting from people. Everyone's gonna have their own opinions and stuff like that on different mechanics and features that are in your game. So you're gonna want to take that feedback and it's constructive criticism really, and you're gonna to need to kind of take that and apply that to your game to make it better. This is all for the benefit of making your game a better game. So as you play test your game, write down things that your players are complaining about and things that are going good, and maybe fix the things that they're complaining about and do more of the things that they're saying that are doing good, right? It's really just play testing the game, having the people that are interested in your game to play test it, give you honest feedback. You yourself can all, are going to be playtesting the game as well as you're developing it, but you are, you're you're going to have a bias towards your game, right? So you're going to want other people to play it to give you f honest feedback because you really think, you might think that your game's awesome and that this mechanic is really cool, but maybe everyone else doesn't think it's cool, right? I know that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, but it's important to understand that playtesting is important for refining features and also catching bugs. You can only catch a certain amount of bugs on your own, but if you play test the game and you have 10, 15, 20, 30 people play testing your game, you're gonna get bug reports back from them and things that you need to fix. This is incredibly important for making sure your game is polished for release. When you launch your game, you're gonna want this thing to be as polished as possible, otherwise you're gonna be spending a lot of time fixing bugs after launch. Either way, you're gonna be fixing bugs after launch because there's gonna be thousands of people possibly buying and playing your game, but at least it won't be as buggy if you have people play testing it now. So I would suggest having a decent amount of people play test your game to refine features, catch bugs, and overall make your game a better polished and better product for when you go to release your game. Don't forget to keep marketing in the play testing phase as well. As you're going through and making these features, be sure to market your game and be sure to post on Twitter, Facebook about changes that you're making and screenshots and stuff like that of refinements that you're making to your game so that way you get people excited about your game. It's really important to market your game as you're developing it and play testing it with your customers. This is also important as well, maybe even if you can get some YouTubers, people that have influence to play your game, right? This may not be an easy task, but if you can get some influencers to play your game, right? You can have them give feedback and also that doubles down as not only feedback on your game, but also marketing your game as well. If you can have them play your game and market it and play in front of a whole bunch of people, a wide audience, you have a lot more people that are going to be interested in your game. I know this is not an easy task to complete, but if you can do it and you can pull it off, that is a great marketing strategy and your game will be much more successful when it comes to launch. Step number five launching your game. After you click that launch button on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, itch.io, Simmer.io, wherever you're launching it to, be prepared because this is now where you're gonna be having to support your game after launch. We're gonna have to make patches for the game for bugs that are found. You gotta remember that there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna possibly be playing your game, thousands in fact possibly, that are gonna be looking and playing at your game and you're gonna have to provide them support once it's out, right? There's gonna be a lot of bugs coming in, you're gonna wanna fix those things and release updates as you go. Also, you have just created a dedicated community of dedicated fans that are wanting to support you and your game, right? So you need to engage with them and keep them updated on patches and new features for your game if you're going to be doing that. 
just kind of interact with your your community now you have made a community of people that are playing your game that are happy with it that are going to be you know excited to see what you're going to be releasing next and keep them updated on your future endeavors as well developing either furthering development of your game by releasing updates and this is kind of where which is an interesting part about this is you can go back up to the conceptualization phase again and start the whole process all over again with new updates and features for your games right generate ideas refine them develop them play test them release the cycle doesn't just apply to the whole game development process as a whole but you can also apply this whole process to individual steps as well which is something that is really really cool when you're developing features and updates for your game launch is important it's probably the most exciting part because we're going to make money right you're going to be making money off your game that's great we all want to make money so that that is also a really important part but making sure that your customers are happy is a very important part of this whole process as well so making sure that you provide them support and you're engaging with them after release is really really important so yeah that's pretty much it uh, for this video um so overall these are the steps for developing your game this is the whole process that you're going to be probably doing yourself when you develop your game so make sure you keep these in mind but uh yeah just like any other software, games have a development life cycle as well, and this is that. So uh, if you like the video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions or anything like that, or any tips that you want to leave uh, new game developers. Um, we're all in this community together. Also, it'd be really cool if you could leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And uh, also, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, oh yeah, I forgot. Be sure to wish us the amazing ball as well on Steam. I'll have a link in the description for that. And uh, I don't think I can do a card for that, but a link in the description. Uh, go check it out. Go wish us it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.